On this slide, I've tried to summarize the different electron domain geometries and their associated molecular geometries. Now I've left off the linear electron domain geometry because if you have a linear electron domain geometry, you can only have a linear molecular geometry. So I've left that off. But as you can see here, in black letters at the upper left corner, I've got trigonal planar electron domain geometry. And then if we move to the right, we see that if there are, in addition to the central atom, of course, if there are atoms hanging off of each of those three domains, then the molecular geometry is also trigonal planar. But if there are only two atoms hanging off, then that is a bent molecular geometry. And I suppose if there were only one atom hanging off and two unshared pairs, then that would be linear, but I didn't have space on the slide. Similarly, if we go back to the upper left, you can see in red letters a tetrahedral electron domain geometry could have several molecular geometries. Tetrahedral, if there are four atoms at the end of each of those four domains. Trigonal pyramidal, if there are three atoms, that is three bonding domains and one unshared pair. Or bent, if there are two bonding domains, that is two atoms hanging off and two unshared pairs. Back to the upper left, a trigonal bipyramidal electron domain geometry would result in, you can look at the green lettering, a trigonal bipyramidal molecular geometry, a seesaw shape, a T-shaped, or linear. And you can see that the central atom is different from the rest. I've tried to put an extra circle around the central atom to kind of set that apart. Finally, in the upper left, an octahedral electron domain geometry has several possible shapes, and these are shown at the bottom of the screen. Octahedral molecular geometry, if all of the domains are bonding domains. If you have one non-bonding domain, then that's called square pyramidal. If you have two non-bonding domains, that's called square planar. If you have three non-bonding domains, that's called T-shaped. And presumably, if you had four non-bonding domains, that would be a linear molecular geometry. To find the electron domain geometry and or molecular geometry, draw the Lewis structure. Multiple bonds count as a single domain. Let's draw the Lewis structure for each of these species. We won't take time to do that. I trust that you can do that. Our purpose here is to simply look at the central atom, count how many electron domains there are around it, and in this case there are four. Therefore, the electron domain geometry is tetrahedral, and there are three of those domains that are bonding domains, which means that the molecular geometry is trigonal pyramidal. If we go to the next one, which is ozone, here again we are drawing the Lewis structure first, so we're counting up valence electrons. There is a correct Lewis structure for ozone but there is some resonance also, so we should really draw two Lewis structures. But it doesn't really matter because we can still determine the electron domain geometry, that is trigonal planar, because around this central atom there is one bonding domain, another bonding domain, and a third non-bonding domain, that's a total of three. And the electron domain geometry just depends on the total number, which is three, so trigonal planar. Clearly, two of those domains have atoms hanging off, and so the molecular geometry is bent. Again, the molecular geometry is dependent on how many of the domains have atoms hanging off. And in this example, the electron domain geometry is going to be tetrahedral because there are four domains around the central atom. Two of them are bonding. Two of them are non-bonding and that's going to give us a molecular geometry that is bent. This is the carbonate ion. There are 24 valence electrons that need to be considered when drawing a Lewis structure. Since 
this ion does exhibit resonance, we should really draw two additional Lewis structures, but I'm trying to save space, so I will just make a little note there that there is resonance. If we're counting up electron domains, we count here one, two, three. Recall that multiple bonds count as a single domain. So the double bond is one domain, and then single bond and single bond, that's a total of three. So the electron domain geometry is the one associated with three domains, which is trigonal planar. And in this case, there is an atom at the end of each of those domains. In other words, they're all bonding, and so the molecular geometry is also trigonal planar. We're going to draw the Lewis structure for SF4. Now, when we count up valence electrons in the structure we've drawn so far, we count 32, and we need 34. So if we have extras, we're told to put them on the central atom, and there they go. How many electron domains? I'm counting five. There are four atoms hanging off. I'm going to rotate that to help you understand a little bit about what we mean by the seesaw molecular geometry, which is what this turns out to be. You can see we've got four atoms hanging off of there, and if you can imagine a little inverted V right here, and then we could push this up and down, and it would go up and down like a teeter-totter, back and forth. In other words, this atom right here on the left, and this atom right here on the right, would go up and down, alternate, up and down, up and down, like a seesaw. Hence the name seesaw. All right, how about this one? Well, these are all halogen atoms, and halogens all have seven valence electrons, so that's going to be a total of 42 electrons. And if we complete the octets around all the fluorines, we count up 40. So the extra two need to be added right there, which means the electron domain geometry is octahedral. And there are five domains that are bonding. That's going to give us a molecular geometry that is square pyramidal. The square is right there. And then there's a point right there. So a square pyramid. So what's down on the bottom here, that's the unshared pair that we're showing. How about this one? ClF3, again, these are all halogens. So I'm thinking there's going to be 28 electrons there, 7 times 4. Let's see what we have here. If we complete the octets around all the atoms, that would be a total of 26 electrons. So we need two more. I think we should put those in right there. That's going to give us an electron domain geometry of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, trigonal bipyramidal. There are three bonding domains. Recall that with trigonal bipyramidal, atoms go axial. So you have to put an atom in the axial positions first, and then extra atoms start to go equatorial. That's why this molecular geometry is T-shaped. This ion has 36 electrons. There's the correct Lewis structure. If you count around the central atom, there are six domains. That means that the electron domain geometry is octahedral. Four of them are bonding domains, which means the molecular geometry is square planar. For molecules with more than one central atom, simply apply the VESPAR model to each part. Let's predict the electron domain geometry and molecular geometry around the three interior atoms of ethanoic, better known as acetic acid. There's the formula for acetic acid, and in the lower left corner, that is the Lewis structure. We've got three interior atoms. We've got a carbon, and another carbon, and then an oxygen. The electron domain geometry around this leftmost carbon is tetrahedral, and we note that there are atoms at the end of each of those domains, so the molecular geometry is also tetrahedral. If we look at the carbon atom just to the right, we count three domains. That's trigonal planar. Each of those domains is a bonding domain, so the molecular geometry is trigonal planar. If we look now at the oxygen, we see that it has four domains, so its electron domain geometry is tetrahedral, 
but only two of those domains are bonding domains. The other two are non-bonding, so the molecular geometry is bent.